Good morning and welcome to COVID-19 Talks with our local health authorities. With us this morning is Dr. Erica Brown from Harris County Public Health, Dr. David Purse from the City of Houston, Houston Health Department. Special thanks to Kathleen Finninger, past president of the Rotary Club of Houston. I'm Dr. Janina White, sitting in for Director Stephen Williams, and thank you to our producers, Priscilla Key and David Castillo. Let's get started. This is our 100th episode, and we're so excited. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with Dr. Uh, Brown. If you could just share with us the landscape of what's going on with COVID right now in the county. Uh, thank you for having me for the 100th episode. Um, we are currently uh, in uh, medium risk, uh, yellow level for Harris County. And what that means is that those who uh, are at risk of severe illness or immunocompromised should consider taking extra caution. Um, that means consider going into crowded spaces. Um, also consider wearing a mask when you are around uh, um, crowds of people. Um, and it really depends again on your risk. Um, the the um, risk of yellow is based on the weekly new cases per 100,000. We're actually down a little bit, but we're not out of the woods. Okay. okay, so this week we're, as of yesterday, we were at 35.11. Last week we were at 49.07. Okay. It's also based on the ICU bed uh, mm -hmm. usage uh, per seven day average. We are up a little bit, okay, at 8.35. Last week we were at 7.94. Um, the third thing is it's based on hospital admissions per 100,000. Um, we are down, which is good, at 12.01, and last week we were at 13.88. Um, these numbers, though, are still in the yellow range, which means, again, that we should take precaution if we are immunocompromised or feel that we are at higher risk. Thank you for that update. Some encouraging information, so that's really exciting. And we'll pitch to Dr. Purse, who always yeah. has a little bit of a lens as it relates to wastewater yeah. and how that impacts what Dr. Brown just mentioned. Yeah, so we found that wastewater has been a pretty good predictor about what's going to happen. And so okay. as the wastewater changes direction, for example, we will then see generally about two weeks later, positivity rates will change and then hospitalization rates will change. And so today, the positivity rate, when you look at the numbers, that are reported, you have to take that with a grain of salt because those come from our publicly accessible testing mm -hmm. sites. But there's so many people out there that are testing at home that very small numbers of folks are going to the test. So I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the number, the positivity rate, but the direction it's going. And so our wastewater has peaked uh, just a few weeks ago at 999%. And remember that is a relative value to the peak of the first wave back in July, actually it was July the 6th of mm -hmm. 2020. Um, and the reason we use that is that the units of measure are just something you really can't get your head around. It's like 1.4 times 10 to the 6 viral particles per <laughs> cubic milliliter, you know. And then it changes to 1.37 you know, times 10 to the 6. And, you know, people, you just can't make yeah. sense of that, right? So we, we picked that peak of the first wave as an arbitrary 100%. So 999%, which is what we peaked at a couple of weeks ago, that's an awful lot of virus. Mm -hmm. And that's across the entire city. So there were a lot of folks in the community that were shedding virus into the, into the wastewater. So we had quite a bit. It has come down to, it went down from that in one week, went down to 659%. So that's about a 30 plus percent drop. And now it has dropped our most recent reading from last week was 409%. Again, about a 30% drop. So we're seeing this very steep drop in the amount of uh, virus that we're finding in the wastewater. And sure enough, you're starting to report that some mm -hmm. of the numbers are starting to change mm -hmm. direction. And so again, this is a two week drop in the wastewater. And now we're starting about two weeks or, you know, two weeks later, we're starting to see some drops in the uh, clinical numbers in particular hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. But again, even at 409%, there's still four times as much virus is in our wastewater as there was back in the peak mm -hmm. of the first wave. So to reinforce what you said, while things are improving, we're not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you for that summary. I know we had a chance to reach out to you all and, and again, remind you that this would be the 100th episode. So I'm so excited to hear maybe if we said sort of the, um, you know, years in review or what it means to have to, that we've gotten to this point. If you all might wanna say a few remarks if, with regards to like a summary of what you think about us being here now at the 100th episode. So I might start with you, Dr. Brown. So um, I joined the conversation, um, I think three quarters of the way through, um, and, and it's been a privilege to, to be a part of it. Um, I, I think we are all uh, in awe 
of this pandemic, just in terms of um, the effects that it has had and the changes um, that it has made to our daily lives. Um, I don't think that it should ever be lost on us, um, the loved ones that have been lost um, through this pandemic. Um, and again, we're not finished. We're not out of the woods. We're doing way better than we were. We've come really, really far. Um, but it was an expensive lesson learned. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, I think that this has been a great platform to share information, um, and I feel privileged to, to be allowed to be a part of it. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. How about Dr. Purse? So um, thanks for the question. Um, I, I, as I look back, I, I think that in public health, one of our most powerful tools is public messaging. Right, and so there, yes, we have vaccines and we have medications and we coordinate with the healthcare industry, but I really think that one of our most important tools and our most effective tools is public messaging. And if we've learned anything through this pandemic is that, you know, uh, the, let's face it, the, the pandemic became, became politicized and getting out the true message became increasingly difficult. Mm -hmm. So I really wanna thank Kathy Finninger and the Rotary for allowing us to have this, uh, this opportunity to talk to the public weekly mm -hmm. Uh, because it gave us an opportunity to not just talk in sound bites that get on the evening news when the reporter and, and, and remember those get edited and sometimes you know depending on the editor they're looking for the juiciest comment or whatever but not necessarily the whole story so this has given us a format where we can go in depth with questions and explain what's behind what you may be seeing on the evening news mm -hmm. and explain what you're hearing out of washington and hear, explain what's coming from the cdc and why mm -hmm. these things are so confusing and so I also want to thank the, the Rotarians who submitted questions because they were really good questions. Yeah. Yeah. And some are really hard. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, really? Yeah. I, I, you, know, where, where did the, you know, A, where did this come from? And B, I'm going to have to figure out the answer to this. So really thank you to, to, to both uh, Kathy Finninger for you know, being the person who probably got this up and going. I have no idea what she had to do with uh, mm -hmm. the Rotary to get it up and going. Uh, but also to the Rotarians who submitted some really, really good questions. I agree. Uh, to HTV, we also want to say thank you because you were um, instrumental. We want to have a video montage of what the past two years have looked like. Uh -oh. And HTV has put together a montage for us. So we'll go to the montage. With me, you have two top public health docs from the city of Houston, Dr. David Peirce, and from Harris County. This virus and this uh, pandemic is stressing the healthcare system. Why are we asking people to wear masks? And we're asking people to wear masks because it protects not just the, the, the persons around you, but the person who's wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. Is it consistent with your normal practice to issue an order before something actually occurs? or? To your point, the, the mask you wear is to protect the people around you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the place is filled with people not wearing masks, then those people clearly don't care about my health. Right. Or, or they don't understand enough to clear my health. Right. Right. But so, it's my decision. Where can we get antibody tests? I want you to answer that first because I know how you feel about antibody <laughs> tests. <laughs> yeah. This current rise is very steep. It looks a lot like that one we saw last July, a year ago. So these antibodies can take weeks, days to weeks, I mean like, in the body following an exposure to COVID. Even if you've gotten COVID, it does not mean you should not receive the vaccine series. You absolutely should get vaccinated. And where people are most commonly infected, unfortunately, is from family members. But the second most common place to get is from coworkers. There's just so much information still to be learned um, when we take a look at all the data in totality. For the first time in quite some time now, uh, almost two months, it, is, it came down. So, and it came down a lot, about 34% from 999 down to 659%. Special thanks to our producers, David Castillo and Priscilla Key, and past president of Rotary Club of Houston, Kathy Finninger, who provides us with these questions. Now joining us is Kathleen Finninger, past president of the Rotary Club of Houston, and the kind remarks that Dr. Peirce just mentioned prior to us going to the recap, we all echo the same sentiments. And we so appreciate your vision and support and, and the Rotarians. So when we invited you to come to set, you know, we 
we shared with you, we wanted you to say a few remarks about what this experience has meant for you, but really that was just to get you to the set. We want to present you with a proclamation on all the work that you did on behalf of um, the health authorities to say thank you for expanding the platform for the community to understand what it's meant in this pandemic about COVID-19 and really getting information out to the public. So with that, I'll kick it over to Dr. Purse. So Kathleen, thank you very, very much for what you did. And I meant everything that I said a moment ago. And so to let you know how important that it has been, we have this proclamation and I'm gonna read it. Oh dear. And you're gonna have to sit there <laughs> and blush. Okay, it's a proclamation from the city of Houston. Whereas, as the Public Health Authority, Houston Health Department provides various services to the city of Houston residents to ensure the pr promotion of health, prevention of disease, and a safe environment, and whereas Governor of Texas Greg Abbott issued a disaster proclamation on March 13, 2020, certifying under Section 41.8.014 of the Texas Government Code that a novel coronavirus, a novel coronavirus COVID-19, posed an imminent threat of disaster for all counties in the state of Texas. And whereas Kathleen Finninger, past president of the Rotary Club of Houston, proved herself to be a true asset to the Houston Health Department at a crucial time during the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas Kathleen Finninger developed a live TV broadcast, COVID-19 talk with local health authorities that aired on HTV and social media. And whereas Kathleen Finninger gathered Houston's top doctors and public health officials for the COVID-19 talk with local health authorities, the broadcast was hosted by Dr. Umer Shaw, Dr. Janina White, Dr. Erica Brown of Harris County Public Health, Dr. David Purse, Local Health Authority of the Houston Health Department, moderated by Stephen L. Williams, Houston Health Department Director, and whereas Kathleen Finninger produced and developed over 2,800 questions about COVID-19 for doctors to answer during the live webcast. These questions offered scientific insights into vaccine development, policy updates, and best practices communicated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at the federal, state, and local levels. And whereas, through Kathleen Finninger's efforts, Houston Television, HTV, aired the first live broadcast of COVID-19 talk with local health authorities on April 20th, 2020, this broadcast provided much needed and timely information to the communities, neighborhoods, hospitals, area businesses, and healthcare workforce impacted by COVID-19. This broadcast was a reliable source of information for the community with the support of the Rotary Club of Houston and whereas on January 26, 2023, COVID-19 talk with local health authorities will celebrate its 100th episode. The City of Houston and the Houston Health Department commend Kathleen Finninger and the Rotary Club of Houston for their extraordinary efforts to enhance the lives of our community. Therefore, I, Sylvester Turner, Mayor of the City of Houston, hereby proclaim Friday, January the 27th, 2023 as Kathleen Finninger Day in Houston, Texas. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nope. Ah, it's all yours. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not sure if my mic is live, but I want to say thank you because um, David, you've been you know, you've been with this since the very beginning. And uh, he promised it would be one program. <laughs> and uh, and then the next week, he, they, he and Dr. Shaw said, let's do this again. This was great. Um, but I didn't expect 100. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you all. And um, for the people that would chat, text, and send messages in, um, you have no idea how wonderful that was. Um, and uh, to see that each week when we thought there was no more questions to be had, someone would have an important question or there'd be a news report that we needed to tell everyone. So thank you for bearing with us uh, for all this time. No, it was great. Thank you. Yes, our pleasure. Well, we want to thank you again for joining us for our 100th episode. It has been a delight. Uh, thank you on behalf of the current local health authorities, Dr. David Purse with the City of Houston Health Department, Dr. Erica Brown with Harris County Public Health. Past, past President Kathy Finninger and the Rotary Club of Houston for their support. Our producers, David Castillo and Priscilla Key. Thank you tremendously to HTV, who's put this, always puts this together. Um, and again, I'm sitting in, I'm Dr. White, sitting in for Stephen Williams, the director of the Houston Health Department. Be well.
talk to me when you answer. Oh. How are you this morning? Okay, very good. Thank you, Dr. Purvis. We're in the open. Three, two, one, cue them. Good morning and welcome to COVID-19 Talks. We have this proclamation and I'm going to read it. Oh, dear. 